I watched Perfect Blue recently. <gasps> Oh! You broke your Satoshi Kon okay. I'm, I'm, I'm proud okay. of you. I'm proud of you. Unlike Gone, right? Where if we bring up a show that you're like, yeah, you should watch it. Gone's gonna be like, Woof. you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I actually started watching Dota Head Dota. Do you actually? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, so, so everyone's breaking the cherry. I just thought because of the Full Metal <laughs> Alchemist that, curse, they're you know? not gonna know that because that was on the episode where we recorded an episode and yeah, then the audio just yeah. wasn't yeah. recording. Apparently, yeah, it's the lost episode you'll the never lost, get to see. Did yeah. like a ten minute speech on why Dota Head Dota is good and you should watch it. Yeah, um, but I, but no, yeah, about, oh, I was perfect sure. blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How mean, did yeah. how did you find it? It was amazing. Yeah, like I okay, I knew it was gonna be good, right? Like everything I've seen of it and and the amount of works that it's inspired, obviously, was gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I was kind of not ready for what I was gonna watch. <laughs> no, no yeah. one it was when they watch it. Like it yeah. was a lot. Yeah, yeah. Some of the scenes were pretty oof. Um, yeah, like how how do you feel watching it today? Like, because this came out in, I think 1995? Something like something that. Something like that. It's which, uh, 1995, 1997, it came out in the it's 90s. It's at least 20 years old. Yeah. 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 How do you feel it ha is now watching it for the first time in today's climate? It's really creepy being like an online personality watching a story about right. how an yeah. online personality is And that's like, what's scary about it, right? Yeah, is that yeah, yeah. the themes in that are just as prevalent today as it was back then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If not worse, I feel. No, no, I, right? I feel like it's more relevant today over 20 years later oh, yeah. than it was when it came uh, out. Do you want to explain quickly what the story is? Cause like, it's been a while since I oh watched my God, it. Yeah. I mean, that's hard. <laughs> it's, it's a mind fuck, it's, it's horror, but it's essentially there's this girl who is an idol. She then quits. Uh, becoming an idol to pursue a uh, career in film acting. But then that's also like a side plot, I guess. Really. Mm, but yeah. there's a guy who is obsessed with her. And the whole point of the story is that he is obsessed with the image of the celebrity, not the actual personality of the celebrity. Yeah. And then it's kind of a story about how much as an online personality or a, fa or a celebrity, how much of your public persona do you own and how is, much of that do you have control over? Yeah, is it is it actually you? Who Who is yeah, the real you? Is, is, it, is it who you perceive yourself yeah. as online or is it who you are as a person? And the fact that this came out in the 90s where- It's way, way ahead of its time. Like what the fuck, right? It predicted so much about how social media would work and our perceptions of like online celebrities and how people are viewed yeah. online and- Just like Satoshi Kon's like cinematography is just- yeah. So out of this world. I love that scene. The one scene I vividly remember is like when the stalker guy is at like the main character's like concert. Yeah. And he just holds his hand up. Yeah. And oh, yeah. That was such a good hand, shot. Yeah, yeah. Like, that is just so, so, because it's just such good imagery. Yeah. Right? He was ugly as fuck. Oh, yeah. No, no. He looked like a human beetle. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, so he's the bad guy. This, this, boy, <laughs> this boy was the OG ugly bastard. Yeah. <laughs> Every ugly bastard was based off that guy. No, no kidding. I mean, it was amazing. Like it was, it, I feel like it's, again, like you said, it's so relevant this time. And I think yeah. anyone, I think it's more relevant now than it was almost when it came out. And I the guess. way the way he pulled it off as well, because oh, yeah. it, it wasn't just a simple story. It was weaved in with just pure top class filmmaking. Oh, like yeah. it's, it's like there was there was a point when I, I, you don't notice the transition, but it transitions into, okay, what's real? What's like mm. her imagination? Yeah. What's, what's part of the film? Because one of the genius parts of this story is that because she's like an actress as well. They use the world of the acting. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they use the world of the acting and like the filmmaking to like blend into her real life. So you don't know which scenes are like, really yeah. happening and mm. which scenes are just being acted. And it's, it fucks with your mind Yeah, because it's like so three much. worlds, right? Because yeah. there's the, the real world, the acting world, and then the, the stuff that she's seeing in her head. Yeah, and yeah. it's so hard trying to like unwind all that and yeah. trying to figure out what's what. But then I guess almost a certain extent, you're not, you're not supposed to. Yeah, you're yeah. You're supposed to just be confused. Yeah, it's the, the fact that you're it's to, so yeah. blurry is right. what's like showing you why this whole thing is so it's, scary because yeah. you don't even know watching yeah. what is real and what is not real, right? Yeah. And, and I feel a lot of that kind of like theming in Satoshi Kon's movies really transition over to his later stuff. Like, did you ever watch Paprika? I've yeah, I did, I did. Yeah, because yeah, Paprika, yeah. I mean, for those of you who don't know, it's literally My anime spice. Inception. <laughs> I mean, it's totally different because uh, it's like, Inception is like a heist movie in a dream. Mm. Satoshi, in, like Paprika is like on a on a base level. Yeah, they're both about dreams, mm. but Paprika is like 10 times more imaginative in like mm. how it approaches its visuals when when in like they're in the dream world, right? right? And that and how he shows the dream world versus the real world is yeah. very much like in Perfect Blue, where you don't realize, oh, we're in a dream world now, or yeah. oh, we're back to reality. And it, it's he does that so seamlessly through his scenes. It's, yeah. it's yeah. really incredible. Yeah, I, th I think Perfect Blue is my favorite Satoshi Kon movie. 
A uh, close second is Millennium Actress. Millennium Actress, I, yeah. I, I saw a lot of people who said that it was his best work. Yeah, yeah. because I, th I think he took a lot of elements from Perfect Blue in terms of like, so Millennium Actress isn't a mind fuck, mm. but it basically tells the story of this girl through film, basically. Mm, so okay. they, they I, th I think she was, yeah, she, I've got, she, uh, the name's Millennium Actress. She's, she's an actress. <laughs> she's an actress. I was, I was like, was she an actress? I'm just like, wait a minute. <laughs> of, course, of course she was. Damn. Millennium <laughs> Farmer. <laughs> she was a farmer.